In this example, we have two identical pendulums, each of mass m and length l connected by a spring of this k at a distance d from the fixed end. Right here is the fixed end, p and q. We like to find the free vibration response of the system for initial conditions. We give two initial rotation a to pendulum 1 and a to pendulum 2, and we have zero initial velocities. Then we like to find the response for the system for the following applied force F1 and F2. These are two inputs, one positive that it goes to the right direction and one negative of the same magnitude that goes to the opposite direction. And then finally we want to find the response of the system of two general forces, one input that is delayed and occurs at T1 and one inverted triangular load that starts at T1 and ends at 2 T1. The first step to find the solution of any of the conditions being either initial conditions or forcing condition, we need to find the equation of motion in matrix form. We do our free body diagram of one of the pendulums and we notice that we have the weight, the external force applied, the force of the spring and the tension. The force of the spring is the constant of the spring times the relative displacement of the two ends of the spring. Then we have our kinetic diagram. We have the tangential acceleration, which is mass times L times angular acceleration. And then we have the normal acceleration, which is mass times length times the angular velocity squared. We will solve this problem for small oscillation. It means that the sine of each of those angles, which will be approximated to theta 1, and the cosine to 1, and the sine of theta 2 will be approximated to theta 2, and the cosine of theta 2 will be approximated to theta 1. The generalized coordinates will be theta 1 and theta 2. We take moment at point P for pendulum 1, and at point Q for pendulum 2. And we get these equations right here. If we put all the variables depending on theta on one side of the equation, and all the variables depending on the external force in the other side of the equation, and we linearize our equations by applying this condition, we have that our two equations of motions are the following. We can write those in matrix form. Our two equations are the following, and in matrix form, we have that our mass metric is diagonal, and our stiffness metric has this form, and it's symmetric. We have the generalized coordinate vector, and we have the external force vector. The next step is to find the natural frequencies. For that, we solve the eigenvalue problem by solving this determinant and finding the characteristic polynomial. And we have to find the roots of this characteristic polynomial, which we use the quadratic equation. We can expand the term and simplify this expression, and we get one eigenvalue will be equals to g over l, which leads to the first natural frequency as the square root of the gravity divided by the length of the spring. Please notice that this natural frequency is independent on the mass or the spring's constant. It's only a function of the length of the pendulum and the gravity. The second eigenvalue is a function of the gravity and the length and the characteristics of the spring and the mass. And that leads us to the second natural frequency which is the square root of the second eigenvalue. The step three is to find the eigenvectors or vibration modes. We will introduce each of our eigenvalues in this matrix and find the amplitudes of vibration for each of these eigenvalues. We do it for the first one, which is gravity divided by the length. We input that value into our matrix and we simplify and we notice that this term goes with this term and then we end up with k 
the square and we have the same kd square kd square and here as well so we have this matrix over here that leads to two equations which are the same equation so we have to find a relationship between the two amplitudes we give the value of one to the amplitude of the first pendulum and we find that the second pendulum moves exactly the same way with the same magnitude and in the same direction. We do the same for the second angular value. We introduce that value over here, lambda, and we simplify our expression and we get these two equations. Now, these two equations are equal, so we find a relation and we set up the amplitude for the second mode of the first pendulum equals to one and we find the, the second pendulum move the same magnitude in the opposite direction. When we found the two eigenvectors or vibration modes, we can go to the next step, which is constructing the modal matrix. Remember that the columns of the modal matrix are each of the vibration modes or eigenvectors. The next step is to perform our change of variable that we say that the generalized coordinates is equal to the modal matrix times the principal coordinate. And we multiply the both sides of the equation of motion in matrix form by the transpose of our modal matrix. We do the multiplication of the matrix. Remember to do it in the correct order because the matrices multiplication is not commutative and we get that the uncoupled mass matrix is equals to ml squared 2 and here 2 as well and is diagonal. We get the uncoupled stiffness matrix and give us this expression right here and we also have to find the fourth vector in terms of the principal coordinates equation, right? We pre-multiply the transpose of the matrix times the forcing vector, and we get this new forcing vector. The equation of motion and principal coordinates take this form. Notice that if we take the first natural frequency will be the constant of the spring divided by the mass, we get the first natural frequency, which is exactly the same as the one we got in step two. And here, if we divide this constant of the spring equivalent divided by this mass equivalent, we get the second natural frequency that is actually also the same as the one that we got in step two. Now let's find the response for free vibration having the initial conditions. So we have initial displacement, of the two pendulums equals to A, and we have zero initial velocity. To find the initial conditions in terms of our my principal coordinates, I have to invert the modal matrix. This is the inverse for the modal matrix. If we multiply the inverse matrix by our original vector initial rotations, we get the initial conditions for our two principal coordinates. As you see, the first principal coordinate has an initial condition of A, and the second principal coordinate has an initial condition of zero, and both initial velocities are equal to zero. We know that the response for initial condition has this form. We introduce our initial condition that we just found, and we find the response for the first in principal coordinate and for the second one. So the second one is equal to C because we don't have neither initial displacement nor velocity. And as we see, by these initial conditions, the response is only in the first vibration mode. The final step is to find the solution of the original coordinates for this set of initial conditions. So we have to find the response in terms of the response of the principal coordinates. So we multiply the modal matrix by the vector of our response we just found, 
and we get that the final response will be equals to a cosine of omega 1 t and a cosine of omega 1 t. It means that both pendulums vibrate exactly in this with the same magnitude and the same direction, with the same natural frequency, of course. So with this set of initial condition in that we give the same initial amplitude to both pendulums, they vibrate and as you see the spring does not compress or extend with this mode. Part B was to find the response of the system for two impulses. The impulse applied to the first pendulum goes to the right and the impulse applied to the second pendulum goes to the left. So it means that we are given the same condition but in an opposite direction to each of those pendulums. This is the equation of motion in principal coordinates and this is the vector for external forces in terms of principal coordinates. The response of an impulse is already known for us and is this expression right here. So the response for F1 will be this one right here and the response for F2 will be negative this one right here. For the first mode, we will use the first natural frequency and for the second principal coordinate, we will use the second natural frequency. Therefore, the response is equals to what we see right here. In the first one, we add the two responses, but since one of them is negative, they are being subtracted. So the response for these two impulses for the first principal coordinate is equal to zero. And the response for these two impulses for the second principal coordinate, they add together, and I have a two the response of the impulse with the second natural frequency for this second equation. Finally, we find the solution in the original coordinates as a function of the principal coordinates. We have to multiply the, the modal matrix times the solution for the principal coordinates that we already found, and we see that both pendulums respond to the same vibration but in opposite direction with this natural frequency. That means that for this excitation the response is only to the second vibration mode in which the two pendulums go the same amplitude but in opposite direction and they extend and compress the spring over and over again. The final question for this problem is to find the response to general forces. We have an impulse that occurs at T1 and then we have an inverse triangular pulse that comes from T1 to 2T1. We can write this triangular impulse as a ramp that starts as T1 but we have to rise this ramp by a step function and then when we arrive to 2T1, we have to add another ramp to make the function equals to zero. Therefore, this force here can be written in terms of one negative ramp, one positive step, and one negative ramp at 2T1. The response for an impulse, we already know, the response for a step we also know and the response for a ramp for an undamped system is this one right here. The equation of motion in principal coordinates is this one right here. And then the solution will be the solution for F1 plus F2 being the solution for F1, the solution for the impulse that is delayed and happens at T1 plus the solution for F2, which is the solution of these three functions. The solution for a ramp, the solution for a step function, and the solution for the other ramp. The same way, the solution for the second coordinate, 
principal coordinate will be equals to the solution of the impulse minus these three functions. We now have to add this ramp, subtract this step function, and subtract this ramp. Finally, when we have the solution for the principal coordinates, we just apply our change of variable, and we find that the resolution in the generalized coordinates will be this one right here. As you see, by this excitation, the response is a combination of the two modes.